Everybody, please welcome the amazing Daya Lakshmanarayanan. Thank you. I am Daya Lakshmi Narayanan, and this is my pose for social media. <laughs> okay, well, you missed the opportunity. There we go. Perfect. Okay, great. Please give it up for social media. Thank you. Yes, give it, give it up. Give it up. Literally, figuratively, everything. If, if you want pictures with me after, I'm also available. I grew up in the South. I grew up in Alabama and Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. Uh, it, it, no, thank you. I'm a brown person who grew up in the South. <laughs> the thing we all knew was John Pemberton, a morphine addict, created Coca-Cola with cola nut and alcohol to help him with his addiction. This was kind of a recipe for disaster. <laughs> But it wasn't just Coca-Cola. 7-Up once contained lithium. <laughs> Sarsaparilla was, was known to be linked for the cure for syphilis. Yeah, I don't know if you rub it on or what you do with it, but yes. Phosphoric acid was seen as something that could help hypertension and other problems. Ginger ale and root beer were also medicinal. Because most medication was taken in liquid form in early pharmacies. And pharmacists used very sweet tasting soda flavors to mask the taste of bitter medicines like quinine and iron. And also, a lot of these pharmaceutical tinctures were mixed with alcohol, which made it even more fun to drink. <laughs> it was like the ancestor of scissorp. Many of the elixirs and tonics had as much alcohol as a shot of whiskey, which was very popular with the imbiber and the pharmacy. Because the imbiber could get an alcoholic drink at the fraction of the bar's price because uh, that was before the temperance movement. It's, oh, yes, okay to boo, okay to boo. These ladies are serious about who they make out with. They're like, no, no alcohol. So because of the temperance movement, Pemberton was forced to replace the alcohol in his drink with sugar syrup. And the new drink was Coca-Cola, and it was sold at soda fountains, and it had carbonated water. So this is Mr. Pemberton, and he's talking about how this is, you know, a, a temperance drink, and it's exhilarating, and it's a cure for everything from headaches to neuralgia to hysteria. But it still contained cocaine. Coca-Cola was starting to be bottled, and so they were, it wasn't just available at pharmacies and white-only soda fountains. Anyone could access Coca-Cola and cocaine. Finally, equality among the races. <laughs> However, middle-class white people were worried that African Americans were doing the same drugs that they were doing. So Southern newspapers started fueling racial fears that black cocaine fiends were going to come after white people, especially white women. And so this created a lot of mass hysteria. And in 1903, the manager of Coca-Cola, Asa Griggs Candler, uh, this is him pictured, he succumbed to these white fears and also anti-narcotic legislation that was about to happen. And he removed cocaine and just added more sugar and caffeine. Yes, I don't know, is that, a, is that an equal substitute for cocaine? <laughs> this is uh, my favorite quote from my favorite play about failed plays, the producers. Failure is something in our culture we said we have to celebrate failure more. Well, I think some fails should not be celebrated. Like Pepsi AM. This was a substitute for uh, coffee in the morning. So in 1989, Pepsi thought, why not release a soft drink that you can have for breakfast? And they boosted the caffeine content by 
but it was still 77% less caffeine than coffee. So Pepsi AM was discontinued in 1990. Coca-Cola in 2006 released coffee-flavored Coca-Cola Black. They worked for two years on perfecting the recipe, and then it came out to try to capture part of the coffee market, and it failed, and they discontinued it in two years. In 1993, Coca-Cola wanted to capitalize on the counterculture movement associated with the cynical members of Gen X. So why not market to cynical people with more marketing? This was, no one really knows what this tasted like. I couldn't find it in the research that I did, but they were promoting it as a feeling. It's called okay soda because things are going to be okay. They even hired alternative cartoonist uh, Daniel Close from G Ghost World to do the uh, illustration. And each of them had dour looking people who were filled with angst and uh, they pulled this in 1995. Joan Soda was very experimental. Fruitcake soda, green bean casserole, mashed potatoes and butter soda, cranberry soda, and turkey and gravy soda. And according to Time Magazine, a portion of the proceeds of Jones Soda went to charity. And I feel bad for that charity because I don't think they made any money at all. <laughs> so two years later, Jones tried again, this time with sweet potato, dinner roll, and P. Yes. P-E-A. P-E-A. <laughs> Beverly, another fail. A non-alcoholic aperitif. Now it's failed so much you can only get it at the Coca-Cola Museum in Atlanta. Pepsi Blue, which was very, very sugary, but also contained blue number one, a food coloring agent banned in many countries. <laughs> Famous zoologist Desmond Morris said that humans, quote, have a curious reluctance or aversion to eat blue foods or drink blue drinks because blue is a hunger suppressant. Fail. <laughs> Soda that tastes like your gum also available in diet. <laughs> Orbitz soda. It was called texturally enhanced alternative beverage and it had gelatin balls suspended in it. It is the only known soda that has bits of food floating in it also failed, yes, on purpose. Even Joan Soda didn't have actual food in it. And then came Crystal Pepsi and Tab Clear. This was in response to the Clear Soda fad. And uh, basically, uh, uh, Coca-Cola came out with Tab just so they could crush the Crystal Pepsi because it was gaining traction and Crystal Pepsi had no caffeine and uh, Tab did. So basically they shut it down and everything, uh, all the you know, clear uh, Coca-Colas and Pepsis failed. So uh, this is, uh, these, are, these are all kind of bad ideas and we could kind of tell that they would be doomed, but the cola wars have been a history of bad decisions and failures. Going back to OG Coke, basically Coke and Pepsi are like many duopolies in that they're pretty much the same. They're brown, they're cola flavored, they're sugary, and they're carbonated, and they taste pretty much identical. So why the intense loyalty and hate? <laughs> they all taste the same. When 
John Pemberton developed the original recipe in 1886, he was kind of a, a forerunner. Pepsi came 13 years later as kind of a stomach uh, uh, cure and by a different pharmacist. By this time, Coca-Cola was already selling millions of gallons. And then Coca-Cola did their iconic contour bar, bar, uh, bottle. They got big name endorsements. They expanded to Europe. Meanwhile, Pepsi became bankrupt uh, because of World War I. Eight years later, Pepsi went bankrupt again. And then they started trying to keep up with Coke. Uh, Coke decided to go public, and they had Sprite, one of their most successful brands ever. Pepsi was like, we can't keep up with these beverages. So they merged with Frito-Lay to create PepsiCo and entered into the snack food and fast food market so they could do something else besides beverages. But the most famous was this. The Pepsi Challenge launched in 1975, where in public places people were given unlabeled cups of cola, Coke and Pepsi. And the majority of people preferred Pepsi in the blind taste test, although there's some controversy around that. <laughs> Coca-Cola tried to replicate secretly this experiment and they started finding the same results. Pepsi was closing the gap in terms of market sh share, so Coke was like, what do we do? The only thing we can think of is Pepsi is sweeter. Let's just make ours sweeter, which led to... <laughs> New Coke! New Coke was such a doomed failure that the Coca-Cola headquarters in Atlanta was flooded with callers complaining. People who were not even Coke drinkers called to complain because of the perceived threat to America. <laughs> Pepsi had their own advertising campaign where there was an old gentleman and they, he said, they changed my Coke. And he said, I've been through three wars and the company has the audacity to betray me. And then all his friends started drinking Pepsi. <laughs> New Coke only lasted a few months and Coca-Cola had to hold a press conference in July uh, 1985, only three months after, they went back to classic Coke, their customers came back, and they stopped production of new Coke. <laughs> Why was it doomed? The Pepsi paradox and the incumbency advantage. People preferred the taste of Pepsi during the blind taste test, but they actually prefer Coke in a non-blind test. So that's because of branding. The, uh, the University of South Carolina found that when compared to Pepsi, Coca-Cola elicits more intense processing in the emotional centers of the brain. Yes. Science. Yes. Also, the test had people take one or two sips of cola in isolation and said which they preferred. Nobody drinks soda in isolation with one or two sips. You drink the whole liter. <laughs> or you have it with a meal. I hate to say it, but I feel that there are bad omens and Coke and Pepsi are both doomed to fail. Science. Science, facts. Sugary sodas are going downhill. So what's better? Juice is also bad for you. It has too much sugar. Uh, unless it is this juice press uh, <laughs> that Gwyneth Paltrow told me was very good for my health. Even bottled water is bad for you. Unless it's this bottled water. 60,000 dollars per 750 milliliter. So in conclusion, I want to raise a glass or a can of Coke to your beverage of choice. And I have so much anxiety because of this presentation. I raise a toast to air. Thank you. Drink well. Bye and thank you very much. Daya. Um, so thank you for that fantastic talk. Another round of applause for Daya, everybody.
And as many of you regular attendees of Odd Salon know, when you give uh, your third talk, you get invited to become a fellow of Odd Salon. You get, you get, you get a little pin and everything. So, Daya, will you join our fellowship? Yes, I will. Yes, yes Reverend, I will. Die, everybody, die. Oh, oh, and here's a card, here's a card, here's a card. <laughs>